Well, we're getting through the shooting menu. Our next one is called Image Area. Now, as we mentioned earlier, one of the key features on the Nikon D700 is the fact that it's an FX sensor, or as they call it, full frame sensor. Now, some people don't necessarily know what that means. Back in the days of 35 millimeter film, it's not quite gone, but it's fading, the, fil the film size was 24 by 36 millimeters, or one by one and a half inches. Well, lenses were designed to cover that amount of area. Then digital came out. All Nikons up until the D3 and the D700 were what called a DX sensor. And the area, the image sensor area, was smaller than what 35 millimeter film was. Well, so they started making what are called DX lenses, where the image did not have to cover as large an area. Now that they've gone back to the larger sensor size or the larger format, they've called that FX. Well, for those of you that still have some DX lenses and now you've got this D700 camera, you have the ability to actually pop those DX lenses on and the camera kicks in and does what's called an auto DX crop. So you're still getting the lens covering the full area of the smaller sensor. You lose uh, resolution by mm -hmm. doing that. It drops down to about a five megapixel, megabyte yeah. file versus, I was right the first time, megapixel. five megapixel <laughs> versus 12. So you get a smaller size, but you're still able to use your right. DX lenses for the time being. Well, you can also use that as a in-camera cropping tool, if you will. Mm -hmm. There may be times that you can't get close enough to your subject or something like that. I've known a few people that will actually kick in the DX mode that just makes it look like they're tighter on the frame. Right. It's kind of like in-camera cropping. Exactly, yeah. Now, we have JPEG compression. Shooting JPEG files are smaller, but also part of the function of a JPEG format is that it compresses and it throws data away. So that's one of the reasons when I'm shooting high quality images, I don't shoot JPEG simply because I don't know what the camera's going to throw away. So I'm going to wait and let my, you know, make those decisions mm -hmm. for myself if I choose to later. But you have options on the way it compresses. You have it for size priority or you have it for <laughs> optimal quality. Well, if you're shooting JPEG only, I'd stick to optimal quality. So you can at least get the highest resolution JPEG possible. Where size priority is going to compress it even more to give you more room on your card, right? Exactly. So as, if you switch from one to the other, you'll notice your counter will change. Now, we have the NEF or the RAW recording. Here's where you have the same option. You can have the camera either compress or not compress those files. Now, they've also got a lossless compressed. Hmm. It does a really great job, but once again, I want every ounce of resolution I can get from my camera. Later on, if I decide to downsize or something, I can do it. So personally, I have mine set for uncompressed, but there are options available to you. The second setting, NEF raw bit depth. Now that one's really crucial. We've got the ability now to shoot in 14 bit over 12 bit. When you open up an image in Photoshop, you have option of 8-bit or 16-bit. The difference between those two is literally twice the file size. So if you're capturing in 12-bit here and then you go to 16-bit in Photoshop, it's interpolating up. Well, if you go to 14-bit, you've got the ability that it doesn't have as far to up-res or upsize that image. So again, we're talking resolution. How much resolution do you need? Only you can tell that. 